Attention, Captain Collins, I present to you and your crew, your new bombardier, Lieutenant Joel Toppin, and your new tail gunner, Sergeant Charles Camp. You shall report in half an hour at headquarters for debriefing. Dismissed. Come in and take a seat, please. For most of you, your last mission was your first one, and a rough one it was. The crew shot down four enemy aircraft, which is pretty good. Now this is your next mission. Today's target is the shipyard at Rotterdam in Holland. You will be flying in the middle position, but you will be part of the low squadron. That means you will bear the brunt of the German attacks. Now let me show you where this target is located. It is here in Zone 4. German resistance will be significant once you arrive off the Dutch coast. You will have fighter cover, but it will be variable. That means good or bad. Don't depend on it. Most of your flight will be overseas. So stay in formation, follow your captain's instructions, and good luck. At 800 hours, Diamond Lucy takes off, headed for Holland, as part of the Low Squadron. The squadron that is most likely to encounter enemy fighters during the mission. For most of the crew members, the last mission was their first, and this one can't be any worse. So they believe. Diamond Lucy enters quickly Zone 2. Fighter cover is fair. No German fighters are encountered in Zone 2, so our bomber continues into Zone 3, where fighter cover is good. The bomber is one zone away from the target zone, and the Germans send one fighter wave after the bomber formation. The enemy bandits make contact, but the fighters are driven away by the neighboring B-17s in our formation. Diamond Lucy enters Zone 4, the target zone, where the weather is good. Fighter cover is poor and the Luftwaffe sends three fighter waves after the bomber formation. The first fighter wave fails to make contact, but because of bomber casualties, our bomber now becomes the tail bomber. That means that more German attacks will be coming from our six o'clock position. The second wave approaches and makes contact. Four ME-109s headed our way. And an additional ME-109 from 6 o'clock. Our crew prepares for combat, knowing that fighter cover is poor. The Germans attack from 9, 12 o'clock, and 6 o'clock high. Poor fighter cover at least manages to drive the 9 o'clock bandit away. Our crew members prepare to give the Germans a warm welcome. Aiming at the 12 o'clock level bandit, the first to fire is the bombardier, Joel Toppin. But he misses. 
the engineer snowman fires at the high bandit. But he also misses. Next, the ball gunner, Alex Berry, fires away at the low bandit. And he too misses. Radio operator Derek Case fires at the six o'clock bandit. And hits. Damage Bandit will break off after his attack. Tail Gunner Cab tries to finish him off. But he misses. The Bandit fires before leaving the action. And he too misses. And he's gone. Leading this fighter wave is one of Germany's aces, Major Uwe Eichardt of the Luftwaffe Fighter Academy. But first, the High Bandit approaches and fires. He misses and leaves the action. Next, the Level 109 moves in for the attack. But he also misses and leaves. Of the group, only Major Eichert remains. He moves in for the kill and hits. The bomb controls become inoperable and now the bombs must be dropped manually, something that will have a negative impact during the bomb run. Bullets also hit the bomb bay, but the damage is superficial. Major Eichert flies across and returns for another pass at our bomber, this time from 3 o'clock low. Poor fighter cover has no effect at all, and our crew prepares for another attack. Waste gunner Judd Vance spray fires, but he misses. Next, ball gunner Barry fires away, but he misses. The top turret gunner, Snowman, fires, and he hits, damaging the Major's plane, who's breaking off, but first he attacks, and hits our bomber in the tail section. The rudder is hit, but remains operational, and Herr Mayor leaves for good. The crew has no time to rest. There is one wave left. Three Focke-Wulf 190s and a 109 headed our way. An all-out attack from 6 o'clock, 10.30, 12, and 1.30. Poor fighter cover fails in diverting a single bandit away. Our crew prepares for yet another all-out attack. Derek Case and Charles Cat fire at the 6 o'clock bandit. But both miss. Joel Toppin and Snowman fire at the 12 o'clock fuck wolf. Snowman hits, and the bandit with damage will break off, not before attacking our bomber. The 1030 fuck wolf is piloted by a German ace, Oberleutnant Kalasman. The Lonesome Gamer. Gunners Schmidtgens and Hayakawa have him in his sights and fire away. But they both missed. Waste Gunner Judd Vance fires at the 130 Bandit. He hits. The Bandit explodes and crashes into the sea. Gunner Vance's first kill. No time to celebrate because the six o'clock bandit moves in for the kill. Multiple hits in the waste area. Both waste gunners are hit. Gunner Schmidtgens has two light wounds. Gunner Vance is not so lucky. His wound is serious. The damage to the starboard wing is only superficial. The 109 flies across and we'll come back for another round. But first, the 12 o'clock bandit fires. He misses and leaves the action. 
over Leutnant Kalasman, trying to find a weak spot in the defenses, approaches the bomber and fires away. Luckily for our crew, he misses and he leaves for good. The 109 comes back for another pass, this time from 130. Poor fighter cover has no effect at all and our crew prepares once again to repel the attacker. However, the only crew member that has an angle is Lieutenant Hayakawa. She misses. The bandit moves in for the attack. He also misses. He flies across. Meanwhile, the tail gunner awaits him. And hits! And blows the bandit out of the sky. It's tail gunner Charles Cam's first kill. Diamond Lucy approaches the target. Flak is light. Anti-aircraft fire is of no consequence to our bombers, bomber. Because the bombing control is damaged and the bombs must be operated manually, our bomber runs off target. Bombardier releases the bombs, but none hit the target. Our bomber turns around to head back home. Fighter cover is now fair. The Germans send one wave after the bomber formation. The wave makes contact. Two Focke-Wulf 190s and a Messerschmitt 109 headed our way, attacking from 10.30, 3 and 6 o'clock. Fair fighter cover manages to drive two of the bandits away, leaving the 10.30 bandit to face our crew. Our crew, exhausted, with casualties and some damage, have to face another round of combat. Hayakawa, Snowman, and the wounded gunner Schmidtgens fire away. But they all miss. The Fuckwolf moves in for the kill. And hits the nose section. The damage is superficial. Tail gunner cab fires. But fails to hit the bandit. The confident German pilot comes back for another pass at our bomber. And he returns from the same angle, 10.30, but this time, our fighter cover pulls him away. Our bomber continues its way home and enters Zone 3, where fighter cover is also fair. The Germans send no fighters after the bomber formation. The Diamond Lucy enters Zone 2, where fighter cover is poor. Germans send one wave of fighters after the B-17 formation. A Focke Wolf, an ME-110 and a 109 headed our way, attacking from 10.30, a vertical climbing bandit, and 6 o'clock. Fair fighter cover only manages to pull one of the bandits away. Our crew, exhausted after facing wave after wave of German fighters, has no choice but to meet the enemy. The ball gunner, Alex Berry, fires at the climbing 110. He hits. The fighter will have to break out after its attack. Next, Sergeants Snowman, Case, and Cab fire at the 6 o'clock bandit. Snowman and Cab both hit the bandit. The bandit explodes and crashes into the sea. A shared kill for Snowman and Tail Gunner Charles Cab. Finally, the breaking and climbing 110 fires away. But he misses and leaves the action. Diamond Lucy finally enters the security of Zone 1. The weather is good and landing is successful. In her second mission and with the hardships of being the tail bomber, Diamond Lucy failed to drop her bombs on target. 
Her crew members destroyed three German aircraft. However, two crew members were wounded. Sergeant Schmidtgens recovered from both light wounds and will be ready to fly again. Judd Vance, although he recovered from his wounds, will not be able to fly again. Because the bomb run was again off target, the mission was a draw. The second draw in a row for Diamond Lucy in B-17, Queen of the Skies.